The French word tourbillon translates to whirlwind in English, which makes it the perfect name for the mechanism in a watch movement that's responsible for revolving the entire escapement. The concept was devised over 200 years ago to average out the effects of gravity, but in practice there isn't really a convincing improvement to the accuracy of a watch that utilises such a mechanism. Yet it still captures the interest of watch enthusiasts all over the world, including me. In the previous video I made the tourbillon cage, which the escapement is fixed to, but mounting the escapement onto the cage is not a simple process. Not only do the supporting structures need to be made small, but it also needs to be made accurately. Here I'm making the supporting brackets for the escape wheel. Watchmakers refer to these as cocks or potencers. In this video I will use the latter term to hopefully avoid offending the YouTube algorithm. Now I know I've made a dual reamer in a previous video, but this one is much smaller, so I wanted to show you quickly how this one is made through a microscope view. In essence, the difference here is I shape the reamer entirely in the watchmaker's lathe prior to heat treatment, as opposed to grinding the shape of the reamer afterwards. I use a buff file to produce the clearance behind the cutting edge, leaving a tiny land. A well-made reamer leaves the hole accurately to size, which we can use to precisely mount the potents on the watchmaker's lathe to machine the underside recess. A spot of superglue secures the potents onto the in situ arbor, we just have to be gentle when machining to avoid detaching the workpiece like this. Using this technique a stepped profile can be achieved. Another way of explaining this is if you imagine viewing the potents from the side, you will see a Z shaped profile. Modern watch potencers are not made like this, since it's far too time consuming to be economically viable. Instead, movements are usually designed to avoid the stepped potent shape, and these equivalent components will be flat on the upper face to simplify machining, which is almost always done on a CNC machine. Once I'm happy with the recess depth, it's tempting to pop it off the arbor and see the result, but this is actually a nice opportunity to get some hand finishing done first with a convenient handle hold. A bit of heat applied to the arbor breaks the superglue bond. The escape wheel needs to be supported in two places, so it needs two potencers. This underside potence is among the smallest few components in the watch. It's too small to hold with my fingers when filing, so instead I use tweezers. Brass tweezers minimise damage to the part, and I don't have to worry about filing them since I can always reshape the tips.
Now the potensors need to be accurately located on the lower tourbillon plate. While a screw provides the clamping force to hold it in position, it cannot be relied upon to locate the part properly. Instead I use two small tapered pins per piece, measuring roughly 0.5mm in diameter. With the potent screwed roughly in place, a tapered brooch is used to open up the corresponding holes to accept the tapered pins. Two pins are driven into the lower tourbillon plate using the staking tool. These will be permanently fixed in position and the holes in the potents are opened out slightly so the potents can be removed when required. To drive in the adjacent pin, I make a custom anvil for the staking tool, which is required to provide clearance for the first pin. With the pins in position, they need deburring. This is a bit tricky because this is difficult to do with a file, so we need to make a special tool. This is a 60 degree fly cutter I made previously for a different task, which I will be covering in a future video, but I can also use it to cut two perpendicular grooves in a piece of steel, which once hardened and tempered, works great for removing that annoying burr left on the pins. You can see I didn't bother to align the fly cutter on the centre properly, but it doesn't impact its efficacy. This is the jewel I will be using in the potences. With a proper setup, dueling is an easy and satisfying part of the process. Partway through the job I thought that it would make more sense to fix the pins in the potents and provide the sliding fit in the plate, so this is what I did for the smaller potents. I will see if I can swap it for the larger one when I apply the final finishing once the watch movement is working.
So that's the Torbion framework done. We still have the tricky escapement parts to make, but for now I've decided to give my eyes a bit of a rest and move on to some of the larger components in the watch before returning to the escapement. Thank you for watching and thanks to our patrons who support our work. I'll see you in the next video.